Well, hi everybody. Hi, Josh. You're first, so you get you get the gold star today, sir. And busy, busy, busy day. Just um, got done uh, doing a bunch of stuff. My whole desk is just it's 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 a it's a mess of connectors and things like that. I was just building a bench harness for JTEC computers for the Jeeps and stuff like that. Got that done. That's working. Um, had to stop. Let me go back to the comments here. Had to stop actually rendering that video so I could go live because my computer won't render a video and do a live stream at once. Go figure. So uh, that's what's going on. I have phones hooked up to my computer. I got headphones. I got, it's, it's just a mess. Nick, what's happening? Turbo Tom, what's going on? People are starting to pile in. Yeah, just a bit. Why am I? Why is my head getting half green screen and half not? There we go. That's a little better. Um, yeah, just just a just a busy busy couple days. And right up until right before this, I was just filming and trying to editing a video and. Um, doing content and trying to get computers to behave. And Tom, I have a question for you. Okay, built this bench harness. Okay, for programming JTEC computers. Now, can a JTEC Plus, which is 99 and up, can you revert the tuning back to the standard JTEC, which is 96 to 99? That's what I'm trying to do. And every time I try to do that, it says... Uh, internal timeout or, or some other nonsense. It just won't take the that ECM for whatever reason won't take the JTEC tune. I don't know. I uh, I was in a hurry, so maybe I was doing something wrong with it, but I'll try again. Any insight to that? You might know. Let me know, but other than that, we're going on. Uh, Big Richard, the D100 project. Right after tonight's live stream, I have to take the oil pan down to the local, um, you know, insert your quarter here, spray, pressure wash, car wash thing to get that thing all blasted off because it's just even sitting in degrease and degreaser and stuff like that for, you know, it's, it's been about two weeks. It's still pretty grody. So I'll get that down there and I'll get that all blown off and get that prepped and ready for paint and so I can install the pump and the pickup on that little 318. Uh, can't believe it, but the rebuild kit that I got for that vehicle and it was on the shelf. So I may have pirated the front crank seal out of it years ago, but didn't have a front crank seal. And the one that was in there probably would have been okay. But as just a matter of fact, um, I want to put a new front crank seal on it. So I cranked that one out. And then, oh, I don't have one. So that was just me being the brightness. Nick, what's Nick's question here? Uh, three teams seems to be going good for Big Richard. What's your take on the power output eventually? I'm going to say um, 265 to 270. Uh, and that's just because... Uh, 318 and a little bit of a cam, four barrel, decent intake. It's got the better Magnum exhaust manifolds and, you know, a little bit of cam and a nice four barrel. So it should pick it up a little bit. It's not going to be anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it should be nice. Uh, hoping for, you know, 300, 320 foot pounds of torque with that cam. It's got a big, that cam's got a big center line on it. It's got a 114 center line, in it, but it's only like 440 lift. So it's, you know, it's not going to chop, but it'll make, uh, yeah, it's, it's a mover. Yeah. It'll, it'll make some good vacuum. It should be a, a pretty good setup for that truck. Cause that truck's heavy and I don't know what kind of gears are in it yet. Um, Tony's finishing up the transmission this week. So if I can get the engine, get my front crank seal back and get all that buttoned up and get the engine painted, we can, I can get the engine and trans back in the truck and then Kiwi's going to come over to the house. He got a new windshield for it. Cause the old windshield is just, 
you know, on the edges where it turns, you know, like a mist or you can't see through it, uh, opaque or it starts to separate. You can't see shit out of it. And it's cracked and it's a big rubber gasket and there's a chunk about yay big on top, on top of the windshield where there's no gasket, no anything. So new windshield, new gasket. It's going to get a new gasket for the rear window. So I'll have new engine, trans, radiator. He's bringing over a fuel cell, got a new fuel pump. Um, I'll go through and I'll re refresh that Holly. Uh, that Holly was a good runner off of a pretty stout 350 small block Chevy. So it's a 650 vacuum secondary. So it should be just perfect for what we're doing. And um, hopefully get her moving along. I got today, I got my alternator brackets in and stuff like that. Need still need an alternator for it, but that's not a big deal. Should be good. Mostly old parts. What's going on? My favorite announcers here doing a play by play. Um, oh, did you find on, on your research, Ron, did you find the tires that Tony was looking for? I know you're the tire guru. Uh, I've never done aftermarket programming, uh, only factory programming. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm still trying to find out how to retrofit that. And maybe I can't do it on the bench. Maybe I need the computer in the car. I don't know, but I'm going to get the, I'll get, I'll get one of these ECMs in the Jeep and see if I can get it to upload the older style program. One is actually, um, one's a pretty, one's the, the newer ECM that I got is out of a, a 3.7 Liberty. So people still might be looking for that. And the other one is out of a 4.7 Durango. So nobody's looking for that because no, there are no 4.7s that, you know, work anymore. So no one needs a computer for them. So that would be my, um, and they both communicate. You can both get in and change parameters and stuff like that. So there's no issue with either one of those ECMs. But I'm looking to get, looking to use that V8 Durango one and convert that to inline six, which there's drop downs for and advanced programming and stuff like that. So, um Okay, I think that the opposite of that centerline heavy vehicles, I put a cam in a tight 1024 centerline and less using turbo nitrate blowers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's kind of wide. It's not going to be as as spirited, but I think it will. It'll just be it'll just be a nice driver. You know, it's going to pull that truck along just nice, just down the road, 60 miles an hour. Uh, you know, there's a four barrel if you would ever need it, but, um, <laughs> you know, we'll see how it goes. Best intentions. Um, you know, everything's clean and new. So we're hoping for the best. We'll, you know, once we get it, the, once we get it in and running and test drive it, it'll be all filmed and videoed. We'll let everybody know. And maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. You're probably more right on that than I am. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. Tony's going to use a 275-6015. OE size was 225-7515. And I tried finding some in that size that had decent tread wear, but damn. Uh, you have a choice between 780 tread wear or 800. <laughs> okay. So between rocks and harder than rocks. Um, right. Yeah, I, it's that. I would say that 275, 60, 15 too, but it's, you know, yeah, that with the 275, he'll have way more options. And it would, you know, a set of 275s on that, a set of 235, 15s would be more than that truck needs for, for like a drag, you know, you put like a, a Nitto or a Nitto drag radial or something like that, on that, you know, not the best high line drag radials, but that, that's for that power level, that's all that truck needs in my opinion i could be wrong i know he wants to keep a always style looking tire on there but you know everybody's got their own view on how everything should happen so fellas what's going on out there tonight i got it was a beautiful day in the neighborhood here so if any of you are in um cold land sorry about that uh, we put a 318 in the crew cab dually, pulled that truck everywhere with a 30-foot trailer, 108 centerline RV cam, not 
much cam over the stock really. Yeah, and this is not much. It's just got a wider Saturn line for whatever reason, probably because they'd have gotten in trouble if they did a direct copy off the 340 cam. So it's a, you know, 441 lift. And maybe they just widen. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's, and you, you have to keep in mind too that that engine's only going to be in that truck for six months. Maybe, maybe. Because um, he's got that DeSoto Hemi that he's getting built for it. And that's got the, the three carb setup and stuff like that. So that's what we're putting together the truck for is that Hemi. So we're doing, doing all the brakes, the electrical, the transmission, blah, 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 filling all the blanks for that Hemi. But in the meantime, that Hemi's not going to be done before Power Tour in June 10th and 11th, which we're going up to Bowling Green and then out here to the Speedway, which is 10 miles from the house. For me, need to put a engine in it. So uh, it came with the swamp-filled, goo-filled 318 that we're doing a quick and dirty budget rebuild on it's 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 only intention it needs to live for six months <laughs> and go 60 miles an hour and pull a four thousand pound truck 60 miles an hour down the freeway lobster that that's that's it and once it's done with that that 318 will come out the hemi will go in what happens to that 318 i don't know it's not my motor it's kiwis i'll take my carburetor off of it and hand it to him and see what he wants to do with it or just put it under his under his bench with one of his other 30 motors he has tucked away in his shop. <laughs> Small block Fords, nail heads, you know, polys. He's got all kinds of stuff laying around up in his shop up there. But that's why it's not. Yes, it's important. But is it really that important? No, because it's only going to get, you know, a couple thousand miles on that motor. Um, it'll be a nice motor. It's tight. Um, the, what am I trying to say? The rings. Um, it's not going to see boost. It's not going to see anything. So we made, I, I, not we, I made the ring gap pretty tight. The spec is like 12 to 16. They're all about 15 top and bottom ring. Um, which some people go, ah, it's, it's 250, 260 horsepower. It's okay. And this way, it's, you know, we're not going to put any fuel into the crankcase. It's not going to have blow by. The thing's going to run real clean. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice little motor. It's going to look neat. We have, it'll be red. We have the chrome valve covers that intake I got from Jeff um, and a one inch spacer and the Holly. And then I got a great big, like six inch tall air filter for it. So it's going to take up all that space under the hood. It's going to be pretty cool. And with the, the Magnum exhaust manifolds, we'll fog those in black and some heat paint, build a nice exhaust for it. That'll be a nice running thing. Does a D100 have a trailer hitch? No, it has. Um, it's got a, you know, 600 pound rear bumper with a ball on it, <laughs> but it doesn't have a trailer hitch. Um What what what's your plan with that, Ron? What what are you what are you thinking? Because uh, we're taking that D one hundred Kiwi's fifty seven wagon and Tony's sixty seven Charger sixty six. I'm sorry, his his black one. Um, from here up to Bowling Green, we can take. There's a two lane road that runs pretty much ninety percent of the way up there. So we figure, you know by the end of there and back, somebody may be towing somebody. So a trailer hitch, probably not that bad of an idea. Um, so the wife says she's going to follow us up here in one of the new cars with air conditioning and stuff like that. Her and Kathy will probably follow us up there in that if they're going to go up um, because it's going to be June. It's going to be June in Tennessee and Kentucky. It's going to be hot. And then I don't think anybody has air conditioning in, out of those three cars. So I think Tony might. In, in it in the charger so but it should be fun like i said cruise up the back road you know 55 60 miles an hour all the way up there it takes about hour and a half ish to get from where we are here kind of in town up to bowling green going up 231 
easy, nice little ride. Being Bowling Green, the chances are nearly 110% that it's going to rain because the last two years, every time I went to Bowling Green to either race or film or to go in an event that they have up there that I'd want to go to, rain. <laughs> so it likes to rain in Bowling Green every every weekend. So we'll see what happens. It should be fun, but who knows? Well, that's what I'm up to, children. Uh, see 25, 30 people in here. Somebody's got to have some questions about some stuff. Or let's do this. If somebody has something to say, what do we do here and here and here and here and here? Got something to say. There's the link. Sounds like fun, no doubt. Uh, sounds like fun, no doubt. That Poncho Le Mans you shot was clean. How'd it sound? Um, I don't know. That was up at a, a resailer up in Bowling Green when we were up there this weekend. Went to the Corvette Museum. Not a Corvette guy, but it's really, it's, it's a cool place to go to. Um, of all the hundreds and hundreds of cars, I've never owned a Corvette. I've worked on them. Don't like working on them. But the museum itself was cool. There's a lot of cool, a lot of real pretty stuff, a lot of historical cars up there. If you've seen the video on it and stuff like that. Um, so there you go. Yep, seen water flowing through the second floor of the tower. Yeah, it rains up there, and every once in a while, they get, what was it, a couple of years ago, Ron, they were shut down for and maybe even three, four years ago now. Because up behind there, there is a, a pond. And the pond got real big. <laughs> and it engulfed pretty much all, you know, all the way up from the shutdown all the way up to the tower and just, you know, silt and sand and ick and uh, made a big mess of the place. They were closed for, I want to say, two months when they should have been open three, four years ago. I can't remember. I could probably... I could probably look it up. But that's just my luck going up there. A lot of people go up there and they're like, oh, I had the best time and it was great. Weather was perfect. I go up there and it, you know, it rains. So that's my, that's my cross to bear for the, that's my Bowling Green cross to bear. But we'll, we'll make sure that the Big Richard has wipers or just lots of rain X, one of the two. What else we got going on, guys? Help me out here a little bit. Yeah, Nick, the um, the Pontiac Le Mans that I did the short on that was at a place called Arts Corvettes up in Bowling Green, across from the museum. He has a whole. Um, well, you walk in, there's like a all the swag, every kind of. Automotive swag, T-shirts, clocks, all the neon, all that kind of stuff. Um, Ron, I've announced at Beach Bend about a dozen times. In all this seriousness, rain, rain only was a problem twice. But it was a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, anywhere was it? Anyway, but there was probably... Because also in their shorts, there was a Hemi... Roadrunner, that Hemi GTX. There was a Bandit Trans Am outside, which was real pretty, that my wife very much badly wanted to just hop in and steal. Uh, and inside, he's got the swag. You walk in, you go through the swag department. Stickers, bumpers, T-shirts, hoodies, models, clocks, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then the main part of that building is... Um, like his car collection, I guess they're they're all for sale. So it's, it's just <laughs> I call it a showroom because a guy like that, everything's for sale. Um, which was neat. Didn't go through because we just went through a museum. I didn't want to pay another ten bucks to walk through this guy's thing, and I could see all the cars from the swag alley. There wasn't really anything that I needed to, you know, put my eyeballs on for ten bucks. So we just passed on that and came out home. But it was a good trip. Lots of fun.
And has, I don't know, has anybody else been up that way? How many? Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I guess I did. Um, so what's involved in tuning a Ford? Like I said, depends what Ford. Um, the most, the ones I've done recently were uh, Chromevic cop cars. <laughs> did did a bunch of them. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I'm on silent. Am I? Hopefully, I'm not. Um, I don't know, my headphone came unplugged or something. If you can still hear me, let me know. If you can't, let me know. Uh, okay, we're okay. Not now. Okay. Um, yeah, have you taken a vow of silence? Apparently, um, I did momentarily, but um, not now. <laughs> No, come on. Tuning a forward a hammer, anger, band-aids, and liquor. Um, like I said, um, did a lot on, on the Crown Vicks. Um, and then, coarsely, with people with, you know, Grand Marquis and non-police car Crown Vicks, just changing some stuff on there, swapping over, you know, the throttle body and a couple parts and put the Crown Vic cop cartoon in it and stuff like that. It's all the same. Um, so what specifically, what specifically Ford were you looking to tune, Matt? Um, let me know because I've done, you know, I did a bunch of work on early Mustangs and stuff like that and up to maybe like 98, 99 Cobras, a little bit of that. And mostly truthfully at that point when I had those done, I had somebody do it for me, but I, you know, follow along and played along. But yeah, Matt, what what kind of Ford are you looking to tune? There, it's tuning's tuning. It just depends, you know, what you want to do, what you add to it, what you want to delete, what you want to change. It just depends what you what kind of Ford you're looking for. There it is. What's happening? What's going on, man? Oh, we're um, we were talking about. Uh, rain at Bowling Green and this and that and the other thing and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Is your phone working? Is your phone on? All right. I, I don't have a speaker on this laptop anymore. It's gone. So I've got you plugged into this phone and there's all kinds of del Wait. Hello? Hello. Is there all kinds of delay? Are you okay now? Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing like five different, five different like levels of delay. <laughs> Crazy. If you have, well, if you have YouTube and StreamYard on, you have to turn the volume off on your YouTube. Okay, right here, hang on. Right yeah. Here, right here, hang on. Okay, how's that? Yeah, it's probably it's probably the echo's probably gone now. There we go. Yeah. See, that's that's why I need you, man, for this technology. <laughs> and we're talking. We were talking about your tires for your Jeep. Um, and then we're talking about Fords are starting to come up here, currently dropping a 408 Cleveland into a 72 Fastback Mustang 2V. Heads Aussie intake with a 3310 one Holley and a set of headers and 350 gear should be fun. That thing should rev to the moon. Yeah. I had um, a 69 Mustang Grande, the coupe, that someone stuck a four-barrel Cleveland motor in. 
that was a six cylinder car and left a six cylinder 3 0 rear end in it with the FMX. And that thing, it, you, it just had like tires on it. You couldn't spin the tires, but the thing would accelerate from 60 to 120 in like two seconds. <laughs> And it made the best noise. You get that thing up above 100, it's just screaming. You just the more fuel you fed it, it just made the just the best noise. Wow! And this was in, in California. This is 88, somewhere in there. Um, going up from San Bernardino back up to Victorville, up the Cajon Pass, up the Big Mountain Pass. And there was some guy that looked like in a brand new Ferrari 308. You know, he thought he was Magnum at the time. <laughs> we just on his bumper all the way up there. The faster he went, the faster I went with my <laughs> shitty 69 Mustang with the headlight missing and stuff like that. So it was, um, he was a little mad. <laughs> and, and Matthew's asking, okay, he's asking about tuning a uh, 04 Grand Marquis. You know, it's, it's, it's the Crown Vic cop car, same computer and stuff like that. Very easy to program. Um, you know, whether you're taking off the catch or getting rid of the, 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 you know, key security system or, or, or it's all pretty easy on that, Matt. Um, unlike the Jeep. Un unlike the Jeep. Well, the Jeep is fighting the, you know, I have a pile of connectors and harnesses and computers on, on my desk. So <laughs> we're getting deep into this thing and it's not going anywhere fast. Um, Matthew says he wants to. Raise raise the shift points. Easy. Um, full throttle shifting. Easy 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 programming change on that one. Um, I don't think you can use the old telephone handset with the computer, Tony. That's what Josh is saying. What, say that again. Josh is saying he doesn't think he could use an old telephone handset with a with a computer. Oh no no it, that's that's the only speaker I have right now. I'm listening to to you. Yeah, it, it's it's got a little, yeah, it's got yeah. a jack that plugs right into the headphone jack and the computer. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat. Mm -hmm. It's like, like twelve bucks off of Amazon. And I feel like it's like nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, it's it's less echoey through the phone than through the the speaker in the computer, though, which is nice. And then Ron's here. We were talking with him. Uh, What's happening, Ron? Pantera used Cleveland for a reason. Yep. Big fun. Did you ever get to drive a Pantera, Tony? No. no. Me neither. Like the one car. I've Yeah, driven everything else. I, I built a funny car for uh, a couple of guys called the Potosa Brothers back on Staten Island. And one of them had a Pantera, but I never I never touched it. Mm. And that, that car with Mark Oswald driving it had the NHRA mile an hour record at 291. And I guess that was like 1990, 1990. Ron Ward would know the car. The, you, Ron, do you remember the Potosa car? No, that's but that, I mean, that was that was moving for back then. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it was the 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 NHRA mile an hour record for I don't know a couple of months. Yeah. Two ninety one. Uh, Ron, I like the Jeep. Also, like manual transmissions. Coincidence? Think not. So he he likes your project. Listen, listen. Everybody needs. It, 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 Ron, it didn't belong to Oswald. It belonged to the Potosa brothers. I put it together. Originally, the original plan was I was going to run the car just match racing, and then they decided to they wanted to do the whole national event thing. So I just I moved on and I worked with some other cars, and they took that car that I had built. With Caminito, actually, a lot of it was Jerry Caminito's hand-me-down stuff. And they stuck Mark Oswald in there, and he ran the 291, like the second time out with the car. Um, which doesn't seem fast today, but that was the NHR million hour record. Which, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still moving, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I don't, uh, it was wicked fast for the day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what do they, well, they, they cut it down to a 1,000 feet, but it was... You know, they were what three twenties or something like that before they curtailed them down to a thousand feet. Something like that. I don't know. I was I was yeah. out of it all the time while that stuff happened. Yeah, I, so I bring it up because the guys that owned that car had a Pantera. They also had a uh, '68, uh, the Sox and Martin '68 Hemi Roadrunner, the show car, the one that they sent out on tour. 
mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to, to the car shows. It, it looked like the race car, but it wasn't. And they had um, a Chevelle. Uh, it had a Richie Zool Pro Stock motor in it. But their cars never ran. They always looked really good, but they never ran. You know what I mean? They were just on and off the trailer type thing? Yeah, it's it's like they they're always shooting ducks or or just there's always an issue with them. They never ran. Like they, these guys were into into big exotic, you know what I mean? Like the the ladder, the flashier. The, you know, they had it was a construction company. They were young guys, mm -hmm. and they they were just making money hand over fist, and they just wanted the bling. <laughs> but unfortunately, they, they never really backed up the bling with any type of like actual you know performance. But they look good. They look really good. They look yeah. Really good. Um, let's see, but yeah, I, I never drove their, their Pantara. Yeah, I've had, I've had guys, you know, flip me keys of their kid car Cobras and this and that and the other car, but people with Panteras are like, oh, just, just six feet, please just stay back. <laughs> I, honestly, I wasn't really impressed by it. I like, I, I, you know, there's some cars that, that you're in their presence and it's like, oh, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I don't recall the Pantara having that effect on me. It was just, I just looked at it and it was like, eh, you know. yeah. <coughs> it's a, it runs Mark Oswald was a stud. I don't recall the exact year, but back in the 80s, he won the championship in NHRA, IHRA, and AHRA on the same year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, oh, he, he got around. He got around. Matthew Ward, how do I download the two? Do I need some kind of device or laptop or send you the computer? Um, yes to all. <laughs> um, don't send me the computer. I don't have a bench harness for that Grand Marquis computer. But you need to have uh, some kind of tool. I use HP tuners and then... There's a dongle device laying on my desk here somewhere, which plugs into the, the software for your computer is free, but you got to pay for the device and to pay to access your computer. So um, the dongle's three three fifty, and uh, a grand marquee's gonna be two credits, so hundred bucks, and you know four fifty, you'll be all set to go. And you can change the tune as many times as you want once you pay for that VIN number that's linked to that dongle. So, um, if, you know, I just, yeah, don't send me the computer because I don't have a bench harness for that type of ECM. But you do have one for the Jeeps now. I got one for the Jeeps now. It's, it's very pretty. It's not like it looked the other day. Ooh, that's snazzy. <laughs> it's got a oh, little... Yeah. Got a nice little button and everything. So, yeah, it's it's very clean, opposed to what it started like. And it works, but like I said, it's just... So, so explain to me now, one more time, why okay. it the, won't work on... These... Okay, this is... The JTEC computers are all the same. That's what they look like. Okay. okay? There's a, a version of this, which is... JTEC, which is the 96 to 99, and the JTEC Plus, which is 2000 and up. Okay. Both of these that I got are 2000 and up, and I don't think I can make them revert back. I mean, it's, physically, it's possible because all the plugs are the same, but I don't know. There's something in the, I, you know, so I'm you, learning. I'm learning as as you are about these. So. All right. So so. Okay, when it comes to the XJ, so you're saying 2000 and up is different than 99 and down? Yes. It's going to have to do with the ignition. Yes. It's, with with the, yeah, the coil unplug or the distributor. Right. 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 Okay. So I'll have to find, so do you think if I found a 97, 98, 99? 97, 98, yeah. Let's just go those three years. The 99 seems to be a change over flip-flop some are one way or some or the other so okay but but one of those will work with the 96. in theory <laughs> i really want to run this car man uh, i know with the um what, what do you got the boy yeah and you really don't want to you know kind of sacrifice one out of the out of the other running ones your toe jeep or the black one you know yeah I, well i mean 
would it kill it? I, it shouldn't kill it unless there's something weird in that harness of the stick shift one that's blowing the computers out. You, you know, that we don't know about. The chances of that are pretty slim because you'd figure if it's something blowing it out, it would just blow it out and be dead. And that computer ran for, you know, X amount of time. Yeah, and the, the reset, if it was if it was a wiring harness, if it was something goofy, then a reset wouldn't make The reset good. wouldn't do anything, right? So it's what what year's the tow jeep? Uh, the tow jeep is a ninety nine. Okay, my, so that's my that's two are ninety eights. Oh, okay. So, well, maybe we'll figure that out tomorrow. Which one's gonna? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just afraid I unplug it for one because everything's really <laughs> good. Well, I know, and yeah, everything works. All the gauges, the AC, everything works, and and, and everybody, you don't want to sacrifice to put it in your the experimental one. Yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, okay, so who popped in here? Jason's from Jason's Garage. Beagle Bob. Glad. Okay. Uh, wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Uh, Jeep killed the replacement computer. I don't think the Jeep killed it. I think the replacement was janky. Or, it was a janky. Re did, did they ever get back to you about anything or no? Nothing. Uh, just yeah, I, I, I wrote him a I wrote him a thing explaining what happened. And he says, "Well, it ran fine when I pulled it out of, you know, the yeah, whatever donor yeah, vehicle." Uh, obviously, right? So, yeah. Uh, I said, "Well, I says uh, if you drove, if whoever drove it drove it normally." You really wouldn't find this problem. It happens over three thousand RPM, mm -hmm. and, and we got a response after that. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna let it go. It's it's, it's not worth it. Okay. Uh, sixty-seven two E Galaxy. What's going on? What's happening, man? I'm just, I'm going to go get ice cream. I tore that transmission apart. I shot a video on it just mm -hmm. now, and, and it sucked. So I'm going <laughs> to go home, and I'm going to eat some ice cream, and I'm going to try to shoot it again first thing in the morning. Oh, okay. No, I was, I finished, I finished my JTEC bench harness video, and I started to render it, and I'm like, oh, it's two minutes to seven, so I had to turn this on, and my computer won't do a live stream and render a video at the same time. So that's just sitting there till, till this is all over. You got some good views on that first one. Yeah. It's like, it's at like 10,000 views or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's and in, in a two week period. That's like, I think that's my number one video. It's so. a popular thing. How many, how many people out there have Jeeps and how many of those Jeeps have electrical or computer issues? I mean, there's thousands of people all over the planet searching that every day. Well, yeah, according to the, the comments and the emails I'm getting, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> can you send you my computer? What about this? What about this? That's why I made this bench harness. So I'm like, now I could be like, yeah, send it to me. Come on. S send so, a check. Send a check in your computer. We'll get you all set. No problem. So Ron, Ron is asking, uh, part of is which transmission does the Jeep have? It seems to be holding up to the abuse really well so far. Okay, it's an AX15. Okay, and I sent I sent Dr. Art a uh, a link to a video yesterday to watch. So there's a channel called uh, Dex Dex oh god Dex's Jeeps just just such Dex and Jeep. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, and he's he's got he's got a bunch of Jeeps that these this they're they're all like woods weapons. I mean, they're these things. I mean, they're just jacked. Okay. Bashed in, yeah, and and they go full send all the time. Like it's, I don't even think these guys have throttle return springs with them when they leave the house, right? Just everything is full send all the time. And there's a, uh, a red jeep that they that's that's featured in this video they sent back to Art that's got the same transmission, the AX15, and they are hammering the living hell out of it. I mean, just constant, constant abuse. Jamming it in and out of gears, banging a clutch off, back, running off a rock, just utter complete abuse. And I'm watching this, and I'm saying, "Yeah, I got no, <laughs> I got no, got no worries." Stuff. Yeah, a couple of power shifts is not going to hurt this thing. No, and they were, yeah, those guys. They were, 
you know, it's a red two door Jeep and it sticks you up, but but it's a four cylinder and the guy just 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 hammers it, just flat mats it. Go okay, go up the hill and stop accelerating once you know you hit a tree or something. But it was that was a pretty cool video from them guys. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm telling you, we're gonna take that one that I just bought, and we're gonna go do that with that. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull all the parts off that I need for the other jeeps. Mm -hmm. and I, I already got some really premium stuff, like I got a perfect grill and whatnot for the, uh, for the one that we're working on. And did it have a, did it have a radio? <laughs> it's got a radio in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's your radio. You were looking. For. <laughs> no, no, radio delete, man. We got a radio delete that. <laughs> no, no, but it doesn't your red one or black one or the white one somebody need a radio that you were looking for no i've got them all oh okay all right yeah, yeah. no all of those are, all of those are covered now so um yeah that's that, that that's going to become a woods weapon nice we'll have some fun with that yeah i, I think we should leave the glass in because it's more exciting when you it explodes while you're you know, getting hit by a tree. <laughs> What's that? Oh, another window. Keep going. <laughs> you're, you're probably right. The thing is, I think it's bad etiquette to leave broken glass on the trails. Well, if you hit a tree, usually all the glass just goes inside. Well, that's true. That's true. Squint. Yeah. You got to yeah. squint. You see a tree coming, you squint. Yeah, exactly. Safety glasses and a helmet and full send. And... Yeah. <laughs> just squint. <laughs> All right, bro. I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home, regroup, have some ice cream, mellow out, and what time do you want me to bring in a Jeep tomorrow? Um, I'm any, any time in the morning, really. I don't have any plans for anything tomorrow, so. All right, so just, just call me when you're up and running. All right, sounds good. And then, the, oh, how did that trans look inside? Really nice, really nice. The converter is smoked, uh, obviously, right? R right. Uh, and the valve body is jammed solid. But everything else inside of it is, is beautiful. That's why oh. I wanted to do a video on what you could expect to find in like a, a, a scrapyard, you know, flood. What do you what what do you expect to find inside of a transmission core that's been exposed to bad circumstances? So did did Kiwi order his converter? No, he didn't order a converter yet, and I gotta talk to him about a valve body, because a valve body is just frozen solid. Oh, okay, yeah, because it wouldn't shift at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, cool. But everything else inside of it is beautiful. All right. Well, all right, brother man. I'm going to cut out. Guys, everybody, have a good night. See ya. All right. Let's see. What did, what did I miss here? Okay. Uh, Jason from Jason Garage. If you're still here, what's going on, buddy? Uh, Beagle Bob, thanks for coming in. Glenn, our big voodoo daddy when it comes to those ECMs. Eh, I'm trying. Maybe I'm not the big voodoo daddy, but... Uh, has a Pentium 1, I could send <laughs> if it would help. I'm not gonna, the the processor is not the problem in those. It's They burn up, and it's not like it's a circuit board. It's like pressed into this aluminum... Look at the video. You'll see what, what the conundrum is. Um, 67.2E, yeah, Monday Night Live. Yep. Uh, pardon the ignorance, but what's your... Okay, we went through that. Ice cream. Nick says, see you later, UT. Okay. Uh, no plans for tomorrow. Art, get a job like the rest of us. Poor bums. <sighs> I... I'm presently on a break from jobs. Uh, a well-deserved break. I mean, so not to say it's forever, but, you know, all I can say is, you know, watch my videos so I can keep making videos. Because if I can't keep making videos, then I got to go back to work. So, but that's okay. Um, whoever I work for is going to pay me, so. I'm okay with that. Um, YouTuber is working. You are 100% right. For it is an all day deal. Um, just to give you an example, most of the videos on Big Richard I try to keep around eight to nine minutes. Um, 
most of the time it takes to film one of those videos for Big Richard is four or five hours. Really, by the time, because putting that motor together, yeah, putting a motor together is easy. Putting a motor together that was full of goo and swamp and ick and ass and everything else, um, it's just it's it's just a lot of it's a lot of cleaning time um, that you don't get to see because nobody wants to watch that. Um, so it's it you know it's it's all day to make an eight minute video. And then you have to still have to edit it and get it out. And then you have to plan for the next video. And then you still have to cut the grass and go to the grocery store and wash the car and, and, and clean the pool and, 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 and. So no, it's, it, it is full time. Actually a job would be um, easier. Um, okay. Glenn telling, yeah. Tried telling it to my wife once. Well, it's it, it it is true. Just have her pick up a camera and you know have her get try to you know get your first dollar on it. She'll understand what what work is. Work is a filthy four letter word. Yes, it is. But you know you got to. Yeah. Uh, the old idea of getting up insanely early and going to some factory or office is fading away. Yes, it is. Especially with me. The last place I worked, I looked for work for eleven years. Who works for anywhere for eleven years anymore? Especially not me. I mean, that's like, you know, twelve jobs, eleven years for me usually. Jim, what's up, buddy? Um, how did that? How did that go today? If you care to share. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens. I got. Um, Plan. I mean, and it's it, you talk about you know the YouTube planning. I have the rest of the week is taken up. I mean, every day I have some cabinets to put together. Um, hey, Jim, hey, you got a pool? You can come by, maybe. Sure. Um, was in it yesterday. It was nice. Um, then I have to do this you know, stuff with Tony and then, Oh, it's Wednesday. So we're at his place for a Wednesday night live. And then pretty soon it's Thursday and you have to put out another video because to do this and rapid transit here too, um, to do this, you have to put out a video to keep it, to get it the views and to keep YouTube happy. And this is, I went deep dive and all this stuff and talked to a lot of people every 48 hours. Um, the content for, for YouTube to push it worth a shit. So, um, it's, you know, it's, it's a constant work. Um, so, Hey, okay. Let's see what's going on. Uh, if I stop wearing social security, work collapse, retirees have me to thank. All right. Uh, good evening. One right after transit garage way up in Wisconsin. I think it was warm up there too. Um, it's true. Companies these days just use, use you up and throw you away. Yep. No matter how important you think you are, if, you know, you know, if somebody runs you over, they replace you with somebody else and make the wheel go. So just work. And if you don't want to work there anymore, go work somewhere else. Do you know why exhaust valves are smaller? I always wondered. Exhaust valves are smaller because they can be. <laughs> no, but in, in an intake, you're taking in air and fuel and an exhaust you're just shooting it out um less volume so number one it could just uh okay number one just chat just to this channel because i love muscle cars but my dream car is a gtx i'm a 63 year old young female and i'm restoring my own gtx just got it painted nice nice you have uh a link or any social media so we could see this GTX. That'd be cool. Everybody, everybody loves a B body. So or on the pond or, or <laughs> maybe good for me pool or a pond pond. Be good for you. That's right, Jim. Um, oh, that's right. I got two jobs. Keep them all out. Uh, Nick B. Thank you. Apologize for the autocorrect. No worries. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, if you got any kind of, uh, you know, post to a link up to it and stuff like that, we'd all like to see that. So, um, 
And then, uh, where was I? Did I miss anything here? Hopefully I didn't miss anything here. Nope, looks like I got everybody a oh, new comment. No pressure for the exhaust. Intake limited to atmospheric pressure. Yeah, it's it's vacuum pulling it in, and you have all the force pushing out the exhaust and the exhaust valve. So basically, it can be smaller. So there's only so much space inside a cylinder. So the bigger you can make the intake, and still have an efficient exhaust valve, the more the engine can breathe. And da 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 da. da. No link, but I no link, but I have photos to share. There's a um, link in my channel to my email. Go ahead, um, send them there, and we'll we'll share them, stuff like that. And are you are you on schedule for Power Tour, Doctor Art? Um, let's just say yes, because that's needs to be the truck needs to be done, 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 and on the road June tenth. April 15th, so less than two months. Uh, like you just heard Tony, he's transmissions in the works. The engine, I'm waiting on a front crank seal and to clean the oil pan, and that's done. Those can So those can get put back in. Brakes, um, have wheels and tires, things like that. So I would say yes, it'll make it. Thanks, Jim. Big Foots and Mopar is all the way from Minnesota. How are you, sir? Glad to have you here um, and, and joining the fun. It's getting close to that 8 o'clock weird hour, so things should get exciting here pretty pretty, pretty quickly, I would imagine. Have you ever worked with any mega squirt based systems? I have not, but I got a buddy um, who builds mega squirts. Explain them to me, um, you know, soup to nuts on them and stuff like that. Kind of understand them. I just, I, I've never had a vehicle on a mega squirt. I just had buddies who've run that system. So I'm familiar with it, but no, I have not used it myself. Good question, Matthew. Basically, there's no such thing as section only only atmospheric pressure. True. You are correct, sir. Um, where was it? Oh, hello. Oh, nice. I just got somebody Venmoed me money for a tune. So. <laughs> Ka-ching! As we're sitting here on the phone, it's Mr. Blaine. Um, I don't know. He should. He should come. He should come on the live. But he wanted uh, a copy of it, so I'll get his address and stuff from him, and then get that out to him. Well, I'll, I'll get that out to him uh, tomorrow, or maybe I could, because I, I just picked up a bunch of these little thumb thumb drives, so. I'll fill it with one of them with a couple tunes for him and send it on his way. Have you ever worked with Speed No. No. In fact, Matthew, I don't know what that is. The only work I do these days is posting little fishing shorts on YouTube. I've been retired for nine years. Well, good for you. And if fishing is your thing, you're good. Suction and liquid can be murderous. Don't sit on the drain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a bad that's a bad picture there. But, um, no, so that's what's going on. Spent the day. Uh, there's, there is such a thing. 
there is such a thing as suction. It's a oh, okay. And okay, okay, Josh. There is such a thing as suction. It is a function of the differences in atmospheric pressure. Okay. Um I own one that I'm currently installing. Curious. I couldn't find any enticing options for, for tuning and for tuning an eq4 yeah um yeah for for, for an eq4 it's you know you just re replace it with like a standalone like you're doing or some kind of you know piggyback chip but no that's i mean that that's a good option the mega squirt and it's you know cheaper than putting a holly on it really for for the same kind of function and if you get you if you know how to do it or you got a guy that knows how to do it uh it's a very cheap option because you can build it yourself uh i don't know if they still sell the build it yourself kits i haven't looked at, at a mega squirt in a while but um you know definitely you'll get a lot more <laughs> you get a lot more flexibility out of that than, the, than that than that poor you know that eek four it's not i mean it might as well be a book not even a computer you know, so it's just, it's just there to offer life support. Doesn't really do much else so far as tuning and stuff like that. Um, they're kind of like once their mind is made up at the factory, they don't they don't change their mind for nobody. It's just the way that it was. They're made to do production vehicles, and so far as adjustability zero. That's why when things like the LSs and things came up were that generation of computers, not to mention it's just a Chevy, but there's a generation of the computers that have that programmability to them, that adjustability, that's what made, you know, the whole thing take off with all the fuel injection and all the, um, you know, boosted applications and stuff like that. Kind of what engine are you running in that machine? She's still here. I misspoke in air. The limit to suction is atmospheric pressure. Sorry, Doc. I'll shut up now. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, hey, there's that doctor. Dylan, what's going on, buddy? Uh, good that you got you got some time to get away from all your activities to hop on board for a minute. Um, thanks for an input. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on those E4s and stuff like that just because no one understood them. Um, but they weren't that, it wasn't that complicated. It was just new and, you know, so you, that's why you have all the, you know, Mustang guys, they get, they get pissed off and they rip off the intake and throw a carburetor on it, but you're not going to make it any faster. It's all what's inside with those, but I digress. Okay. Speedy, you, you is an ECM based on a, and open sourced, micro controlled, very DIY, low budget. Huh. Let me. That's interesting. D U I N O. Uh, Speedunia Open, Easy Engine Management. Huh. The new ad, uh, DIY friendly phones community. Oh, this is interesting. All right. I will, let me bookmark this. I'm on a page that you can't see, sorry. Uh, <laughs> But here, let's let's do this. We can. I think we should be able to uh, share the screen. Big Dunio window. No, no, that's no, 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 that's not good. I know how to do this. I really do. Share screen. Window.
There we go. So, huh, about overview. Open source from the ground up. Ultra low price hardware is designed to be low cost, community driven. And hardware, huh? Not support community news. Where to buy? Australia, Michigan, UK, and in the Caribbean. To be too matronic. I'll have to take a look at this. Huh. Cool. Okay, back to normal programming. But that's cool. Thanks, thanks for that, Matt. I'll um I'll I'll look into that and then let you know what I think. She got back from Waco, Texas. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> Cause Dylan, his job takes him all over Hell's Half Acre. And that he just happened to be in, in Waco last week, apparently. Um, got porch jacked. Hope they really enjoy the hinge field rebuild kit for the... Really? The, you had a porch pirate take a hinge pin rebuild kit for a Belvedere? Yeah, what are they going to do with that? They'll be like, what? It's a pin in a bushing. What? Oh, this is crap that we stole. Maybe they'll bring it back out of shame. What else is going on up there, Mark? So let me know. And then have you, I don't know, you've been following along in the Big Richard build because it's, you know, it, it's a Mopar thing and generally not my wheelhouse, but I'm actually thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, it it's been fun. It's because it's, something out of the ordinary it's not just just a just a rebuild because it was so full of sludge and stuff like that and it's you know it's it's got a theme and it's got a you know a purpose and stuff like that and it has a deadline so it's got all the earmarks of you know interest so all right, hour and two. Um, if nobody has anything else that they want to talk about, pop up now, or we may just wrap this up after an hour tonight. All right, looks good. Um, nice turnout. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Um, it was a lot of fun. Learned something. I got, I'm really going to look into that. To that. To that ECM. I'm very curious about that. Uh, thanks, Matthew, for for that. Um, I'll let you know how that works. Other than that, appreciate it, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.